some new stories for you from Somali land, Ethiopia and Ukraine, Russia conflict. I could not update you about uh, uh, battlefield situation in Ukraine. Has Russian military uh, made further territorial gains in Ukraine? What's the situation around Kiev, Ukraine capital? Today I'll update you, I'll brief you on the map about existing battlefield situation in Ukraine. Before that, uh, uh, Somaliland, self-declared country in the Horn of Africa, in quest of recognition. Uh, its president, uh, Musi Bayi Abdi, visited uh, the U.S. He was invited by Heritage Foundation, a foundation. There he delivered a speech. Uh, and he uh, ruled out any possibility of reunion, union rather, with uh, Somalia. Uh, he called for recognition of Somali land by the U.S., but we saw a statement from the U.S. State Department which said that it would uh, strengthen its ties with Somali land within the framework of one Somalia policy. So, U.S. officially rejected my land's request for recognition, but a bill has been introduced by a U.S. congressman uh, for recognizing Somali land as a country. Scott Perry is a U.S. congressman. He is a Republican. Uh, he has introduced a bill at, at uh, House's Foreign Affairs Committee. Foreign Affairs Committee of U.S. House of Representatives. This bill uh, calls for recognition of Somali land as a country. The bill has been introduced at the committee. If the committee approves this bill, it will be submitted to uh, the House, House of Representatives. Then it will be put to vote uh, at the House and the Senate. So if both bodies uh, uh, approve this bill, my land uh, could be recognized as a country. Long way to go. Several such bills are table, but uh, obviously it's difficult for such bills to be approved at U.S. House and Senate. But my land's government has released a statement. It says that there is hope that uh, U.S. House, uh, U.S. Senate uh, will approve this bill. But first step is House's Foreign Affairs Committee. Will this committee approve this bill? Uh, head of this committee is Gregory Meeks. Uh, Musi Bay Abdi during his visit met with uh, Gregory Meeks, uh, a congressman. He is also Republican, I think. Uh, so let's see if this committee approves the bill. The next step would be its approval at uh, House of Representatives. Second viewers, uh, Ethiopian diaspora is planning a large rally in, in the U.S. in Washington, D.C. on Monday. Today is Monday, next Monday. Uh, we know that uh, Ethiopian diaspora is a bit split these days uh, over HR double six double zero bill, another bill which was passed by a Foreign Affairs Committee uh, due to be tabled uh, at uh, the House of Representatives. Uh, and uh, Ethiopian diaspora members, some backed by Ethiopian government, uh, they are calling upon the U.S. government, U.S. senators, uh, U.S. lawmakers not uh, to approve this bill. If the bill is passed, it could lead to sanctions, uh, serious sanctions on Ethiopian government. Uh, that is why this large rally is being organized. Can Ethiopian and perhaps Eritrean diaspora members organize a big protest on Monday in Washington, D.C.? That remains to be seen. But uh, we have seen massive rallies in the U.S. Uh, by Ethiopian diaspora last year. Uh, but that was the time when diaspora was united mostly, except Tigrayans. Uh, and uh, they were backing Ethiopian government's position on Tigray conflict. Now, the diaspora is split. Uh, some sections reject uh, Ethiopian government's uh, decisions like release of uh, uh, TPLF leaders, uh, like halting of military offensive, uh, 
uh, and and the decision not to enter Tigray militarily. So now the end action on, on Fano as well, it is a source of controversy. Now the Aspera members are split. Will they be able to take out a large rally in Washington on Monday? That remains to be seen. But a week before the actual uh, date of this rally, uh, it has been announced. It means that preparations will be made in the next six to seven days uh, to ensure that large number of Ethiopians attend the rally. I'll update you on Monday. Now, Russia-Ukraine conflict was uh, firstly th three updates. Then I'll brief you on the map about this conflict. Firstly, uh, some less reported developments, less reported by international media. Firstly, we have been hearing since last night that. Uh, uh, Russia, Russian uh, Air Force uh, carried out an air strike on a shopping center in Kiev. Uh, it's a Ratroville shopping uh, mall. It's in Ratroville, Ratroville shopping mall. It's in Kiev, uh, Ukrainian capital. You can see the picture on your screen. The picture show a destroyed building of this uh, shopping mall. Now, we have received some pictures which indicate that this shopping center was being used as a depot for Ukrainian military vehicles. So, that might have been one of the reasons behind a missile strike on this shopping center. Uh, it does not mean that we are justifying Russian attacks on civilian infrastructure, but in times of war, these civilian buildings are used by military. So, that is why sometimes uh, uh, civilian buildings are also targeted. Uh, secondly, Ukraine, uh, its president, Ukraine President Zelensky has passed some orders uh, uh, in the past few hours uh, which are being seen as controversial. Firstly, he has banned to 11 political parties. There are 18 political parties in Ukraine. 11 have been banned. Why? They are accused of being pro-Russia. Secondly, all national TV channels have been combined into one. It means that there would be no difference of opinion. There would be no dissenting voices on Ukrainian news channels. Russian language is being banned in some places. We have heard that some educational institutions are planning to ban Russian language. Russian language, uh, Russian speaking news channels, other channels, they are also being banned. Now, there is uh, presence of large number of uh, Russians in Ukraine. Uh, I think half or uh, one third of Ukrainians, they speak Russian language. How can you ban Russian language in uh, Ukraine or Russian uh, speaking news channels? That should not happen. But we, we are seeing that uh, in this war, uh, some actions have been taken which are violation of freedom of expression, uh, violation of basic human rights, right to information, right to know, but uh, rights are being uh, violated. Thirdly, uh, Russia issued an ultimatum last night about Mariupol. Mariupol has been under siege for uh, more than two weeks, I think. Uh, Russia uh, announced an ultimatum that uh, all Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian forces must surrender by 5 a.m. Monday. But Ukraine immediately rejected this ultimatum. There are tens of thousands of Ukrainians trapped in Mariupol for more than two weeks. No electricity, no gas, no heating, no water. It's under total siege from Russian side. But so far, Ukraine is not surrendering. Its forces are in Mariupol, but it has rejected Russian uh, ultimatum of surrender. Now, let me update you about battlefield situation on this map. Let's start from southern Ukraine. You can see Odessa on this map. Uh, port city strategically very important place it is still under the control of Ukrainian forces but today Russian ships uh, shelled Odessa from here from Black Sea but Odessa is under Ukrainian control then you can see uh, Kherson taken by Russian and, uh, several days ago it's under Russian control 
Mykolaiv to uh, the north and west of uh, Kherson is Mykolaiv main city. Here you can see uh, Mykolaiv, but Mykolaiv uh, was under partial siege from Russians. Russians tried to move towards Mykolaiv from eastern and from uh, northern directions, but Mykolaiv is under uh, Ukrainian control. The city has not been taken by Russia so far. From Kherson, Russians moved towards uh, Kakhovka. It is under Russian control. Then uh, you can see Melitopol. It was taken by Russians uh, several days ago under Russian control. But yes, here it is also under Russian control. What about this place, Mariupol? Mariupol has been under uh, siege from Russia for several days. It is still under siege uh, from eastern, uh, northern and western directions. Mariupol is under siege. Russians, uh, they are trying to uh, issue ultimatums. They want Ukraine forces to surrender here. Uh, uh, but so far, no surrender. Russians are all around Mariupol. Then uh, here you can see Donetsk and Luhansk. Both are under the control of Russia-backed uh, separatists. Luhansk, Donetsk and the areas between Donetsk and Mariupol, they have also been taken by Russian forces. Luhansk, Donetsk and the south of Donetsk, these areas, Volnovakha under Russian control, Mariupol under uh, siege. Here you can see uh, Zaporizhia, uh, where there is a nuclear power plant, it is also under Russian control and Hodar, Zaporizhia under Russian control. Now eastern Ukraine, Kharkiv, which has proven uh, to be a very difficult front for Russians. Kharkiv city is not under Russian control so far. From Belgrade, uh, they have made several attempts to take control of Kharkiv, but it's not under full Russian control. Sumy can be seen under partial control of Russian forces. Uh, they have made advances from Sumy towards Kiev. Here you can see Kiev. Uh, from Sumy, Russian forces have managed to advance into western direction towards Romney, towards uh, Prailuki and now they are close to Kiev here. Uh, but this area, this one, this one, it is not under Russian control so far. Uh, Russians have been stopped near Kharkiv uh, and near Sumy as well, but they have managed to move along this road towards uh, Kiev. Now, northern part of uh, Ukraine here, Chernihiv, has been taken reportedly by Russian forces. Uh, Chernobyl here under Russian control and from here Russian forces are moving towards Kiev. They have managed to get close to Kiev. So from northern eastern directions Russian forces are close to Kiev and they are here as well Irpin. Irpin and Gomel or Hastomel airport close to Irpin here. You will be able to see uh, the airport uh, which is uh, Hastomel. Here you can see. A Stormal Airport under Russian control, Irpin as well. Uh, so you see that from Irpin side, from uh, Chernihiv side and from uh, Prailuki side, Kiev is under siege but not under total siege. This road is open. You can see Bila uh, Sirkivia. So Kiev is under partial siege. Russians have not been able to storm the city so far, but uh, missile strikes, air strikes on Kiev, on Kharkiv, they are underway. Western part of Ukraine, all under Ukrainian control, Lyiv, areas close to Poland, other countries. So you see that Russian gains are mainly here, this area, southern Ukraine here. Uh, and here, eastern part of Ukraine, they have not made major gains so far. From Sumy, they have managed to reach uh, close to Kiev and from Belarus border side as well, they are reaching close to Kiev. But Kiev is not about to fall so far. Russian speed of territorial gains has slowed down considerably. 
what is Russia's plan B? In next videos, we'll try to have a look at Russia's plan B. Thank you for watching.